Okay, we're given a graph here, and this graph represents our total cost with the red uh, curve here, and our total revenue with this kind of blue curve going on here. And let's just talk about graphically what some of these different concepts look like on a graph and sort of how to read it. It's not going to be the biggest thing that we do in this section by any means, but let's talk it through real quick. All right, so fixed costs. We're trying to answer what are our fixed costs, or F of C. Let's use our cost function, so the red one. And fixed costs are the amount you have to pay no matter how many you sell, right? It's like your rent, basically stuff like that. So if we don't sell any, if we go all the way down here to zero for our quantity being sold, we still have to pay one, and I guess this is in thousands of dollars for this specific example. So our fixed costs are going to be $1,000, and that corresponds with the y-intercept for our cost function. All right, now the average cost, again, we're going to be referring to our cost function going on here. The average cost would be the total cost divided by the number of units sold. So if we're thinking about this graphically, if I start at 0, 0, and I draw a line to any point on here, the slope of this line, going from 0, 0 to any specific point that we're looking at here, the slope of that line would be our average cost for selling that many units. All right, let's see if I can get rid of this. All right, um, what about the average revenue? Okay, very, very similar. The average revenue is gonna be using the revenue function this time, but again, it's that same idea. If I connect a point from the origin, from zero, zero, to any point that's on this line, or on this curve, I should say, for our revenue function curve, the slope of that is going to be the average revenue for Q units. Now, what about the profit? As we take a look at our profit, remember, profit is when you get to bring money home, right? When your revenue is bigger than your cost. So as we take a look at our graph, let's think about um, when is this actually going to be profitable? When are we making a profit? So we want to know when is our revenue function higher up than our cost function. So I'm looking at this inner spot right here, and it looks like that starts at, kind of tracing this down, it starts when we're selling about 3.5 thousand items. And then it ends, kind of trace this down at about 7.5 thousand or 75 thousand items. Now, when are we going to get a maximum amount of profit? Because that's where we really want to be, right? We want to be in that sweet spot where we're selling exactly the right amount that we make the maximum number of dollars, right? Amount of profit. So what we're looking for is in the middle here, where is the gap, the very biggest, where the blue curve is above the red curve? And looking at this, I think it's right about in here. That's definitely bigger than up and down if I drew little line segments above or below that. So I'm guessing that's going to be right about 5.75 thousand. So that's kind of the sweet spot with this model that you're going to be able to maximize your profit if you are selling for the right price um, and producing and selling the exact right amount of uh, items. All right, next up marginal cost. Remember, we've referred to this in a few videos. Marginal indicates the same thing as whenever we hear marginal, we want to be thinking that's the slope of a tangent line. All right, so slopes of tangent lines represent the marginal cost. All right, slopes of tangent lines are also the same thing except for tangent lines to the revenue function. Final total variable costs. As we take a look at this, the total variable costs are the regular costs, um, well, <laughs> I should say it this way. There are two things that make up our cost graph. All right, our cost function here, the red one, is made up of both fixed costs and variable costs. So our total variable costs are if we took away those fixed costs that at the very beginning here we said were a thousand. So if we take away those thousand, it's basically shifting that exact same graph down, and that's the graph of our total variable costs. 
All right, there is one other thing I want to mention here. Now, we identified where we thought we were going to have the maximum amount of profit. It was going to be right about here in at 5.75, the biggest gap in between our revenue and our cost. Another thing that's kind of cool about this, we only mentioned marginal cost and marginal revenue in passing. If I were to draw in these tangent lines right at that exact spot, so there's the marginal cost, tangent to the cost function at that same point, and marginal revenue should look like it's tangent to the revenue function at that exact same value, looking right here in the middle. Kind of like it touches the graph right there, and those are tangent lines. So those represent our marginal cost and marginal revenue for that value at 5.75, that quantity. You'll notice that those lines look like they're parallel, or they would have equal slope. So we're going to be able to maximize our profit, right, that 5.75, whenever our the slopes of these tangent lines are equal, well, that's when our marginal cost is going to equal our marginal revenue. So we can maximize this profit when marginal cost equals our marginal revenue, which kind of comes in handy later on. I know it's a little bit confusing when you first see these graphs and all the information thrown at you. Don't worry, it gets a lot easier as, you, uh, as we look at some actual problems.